good afternoon. We're going to be talking about marketing for design-centric brands. So this really intrigues me because the core of our practice is to put India on a global platform. And the narrative of all three of you is to use local materials and craft. And this is the narrative that you guys essentially use to build your brands, right? Um, and the, what's unique is that they've used this in three very distinctive and different ways, which we'll delve into during the course of this discussion. But it's an absolute honor to be here firstly. I think um, to be amongst the, uh, the, the founders of India-centric brands is something that's very, very special to me. And the use of, um, conscious use of local material is again, something that's very special to me. Okay. So I think the audience and I know all of your brands very well, but this discussion is essentially for anyone who wants to start something new, me included, to see how design was important for you guys individually and how you took that and made successful companies out of it. So I'm opening this question to all three of you. I want to know how it all started, starting from concept to reality, how did it all begin? Where did you start from? I want to know everything. <laughs> so shall we start with you, Vivek? Hello. Okay, so I think uh, what's really important, I mean, how does one say that, you know, did you use consciously use design to market? I did not. I think uh, for me personally, um, living in and being surrounded by well-designed things uh, was an essential part of my life. So I think your surroundings, and whenever you enter a space, you know whether it's the light, the smell, uh, it just changes the way you feel. Yeah. You know, and so when we were coming to open our first store for Kama Ayurveda, which was in. Now, 12 years ago, 2012 was our first store. You know, we were selling earlier out of shop in shops. And the thing was, how does one, like, what is Kama Ayurveda? What is the home of Kama Ayurveda? What is a house for Kama Ayurveda feel like? Yeah. What is that sensation? And that sensation for us started with the first store, which happened to be in Khan Market. And Khan Market was a refugee market. Um, it, was a place which opened at the will, was created at, at Independence for, for refugees, so a shop downstairs and a flat upstairs. So it had very high ceilings. And that, that idea of being in a post-colonial country, uh, so we basically played on that. We had very high ceilings. Uh, so we knocked out all the false ceilings. And from the beginning, when we started Karma, every single thing was designed. So the bottles, I couldn't find bottles I liked. And so with no money, we created yeah. our own molds, you know? The idea is that it should, I should have something in my bathroom which I like looking at. And I think, uh, I hope lots of you are using Kama Ayurveda in your bathrooms <laughs> and like the way they look and feel in your bathroom. So that is really important. So every single touch point, whatever a consumer touches, anything at all, uh, has to be designed and has to be thoughtfully and mindfully designed uh, for ease of use because you know, you don't want to be in the bathroom and you don't know whether it's the shampoo or the shower gel or the conditioner. I mean, there's legibility, there's the, the, the way this stuff pours out of the, you know, how, it, how does it pour out of the thing? How do you end up using it? Um, and also then the sensation of when you're in the store, what does that feel like, you know? And if you're able to curate every single touch point, the music, the scent, the light, uh, the materials, because as soon as you, end, I think it's subliminal in our subconscious as work and Ravi, you're an interior designer, you, you see this every day, and you work with this every day, is, you know, there are markers for everything, you know? So velvet would be a marker for something, linen would be a marker for something else, you know, um, leather is a marker for something else. The subliminal markers, it's not obvious, but it's a marker, and which is why you consciously then choose materials to create that effect that you're gonna try and use. So that's how it started, this idea of basically when we started the brand, it was, it's all very well to have high quality products that are going to work, but they should also look really good. And I want, I should basically, 
I, I found that human beings are all pretty similar. We all like nice looking things. So I was like, I need to have a product which I want to buy. I first buy it because of the way it looks and then it's performance. So we designed it like that. I basically designed them so you'd want to buy them. So was it a lack of it in the market that led you to start the company or was it just something that you wanted to A lack to of what? Lack of a product like Kama. Oh no. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ayurveda has been around for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, no, well, that's a long story, the starting of the brand. But I think the once we, okay, you have to figure out a core story. Why are you doing this? Exactly. So why are you doing this? Yeah. So, and why were we doing it? To take something which is Indian, which is traditional, yeah. and had proven efficacy out to the world. Yeah. Exactly. So we weren't even thinking of India. We were thinking of taking it out to the world. I mean, who knew? You know, we, I mean, I went to art school. My partner studied painting. So, you know, zero business background. But we ended up with, you know, we ended up creating a, which is why it looks so good. And it feels so nice. And also because I think we were so conscious of, because it is not our our first job, already doing other stuff, that if you're going to do it, the quality has to be amazing. Otherwise, why bother? You know? So your hair has to stop falling, your dark circles have to go, your skin has to glow, you know? So all of those things. Yeah. Ravi? Ravi. Hi. So, you know, I think there is no formula, right? There is no, you don't pick something and you say, these are the things I'm going to apply to make this brand successful. Because I think design-centric brands need to transcend into, like Vivek was saying, into every element, the sensory, the touch, the, you know, the feel, the experience. Uh, and for, a, I mean, for a brand like ours, where we're only four years old into products, uh, but we've been designing spaces for 14 years now. Uh, it came as a natural, extension of what you you asked him a question that uh, exactly was it a lack of uh, products and collectibles in the market that started i mean nudged you into developing it possibly yes there was a there was a desire to create something that was unique uh, but at least for me for what we've been working on uh, design <laughs> is something that is inbuilt it's it's we seek for it for that experience all over and i think we've been making a conscious decision that there is no marketing tactic you have to learn to evolve you have to earlier when the conversation was happening in the earlier talk ashish made a very nice comment of how when you commit to something and it becomes real when you've when you started doing it because there are bills to pay and you make you need to make things happening so there is a sense of evolution that you have to sort of keep growing with however within that journey i think what makes brands stand out and i mean i'm surrounded by some wonderful people on this panel right now with some great brands is that there has always been a sense of consistency when you go to a kama store whether you look at the store in London, which was launched, or whether he, as, as Vivek spoke of the first store in Khan Market, it wasn't a formula. It was, it, it took from, from the space, right? And the brand was amalgamated into that. And they're not picking and they're not putting it there. Same for me. I remember Gotham at Hoskas Market in a small little uh, alleyway, right? And that's the first time I discovered Napa Dori. And today when I'm, I'm in London, and I mean, I'm, I can't, right? And I'm seeing the store, or I'm at the Conrad store, and I'm looking at Napa Dori products, that essence, the first time when I saw the product, still continues to be there. The design will change, the design will evolve, but there is depth, there is consistency. So. I think that's what I am trying to sort of stick to and learn to and evolve with that. And that is what is working for us. Awesome. I mean, I, I remember like a couple of years ago, I used to look at your page and screenshot all these images. And I mean, your work is timeless. And I mean, I'm a huge fan. Okay, so Gotham, I think um, Ravi kind of segued uh, into yeah, the next too question. Too many kind words. Sorry? I said too many kind words. <laughs> 
No, I, I mean, when you started off the brand, did you really think that it's going to go global and are you going to be opening all these branches across the world? Was that something that you had in mind or was it just like a passion project that started off that took its course? Well, I was listening to Vivek before and um, my story is completely different. It was complete desperation. Uh, no funds, nothing. Uh, had to make money and uh, survive. And uh, the only way I could express myself was uh, visually. I'm massively dyslexic and, uh, you know, academically a complete retard. So that was not going to happen. Um, but I could express myself uh, in the things that I did, the craft, maybe sketching, maybe whatever form of creative expression that might come in. And uh, Napadori happened by chance. Um, as I said, I needed a outlet or something to start making some money at that point of time. But uh, from the get go, I ex knew exactly in terms of how the DNA and the language of the brand would be and what I would like it to be and express it in a certain way. It had to be minimal. It had to have a, a very earthy tone and things are very, which are close to me. And um, and it's over the years evolved. Obviously, brands nowadays start instantly and vanish instantly. And uh, that's something that I've noticed, you know, like I think uh, legacies are created over time, you know, and you have to have patience, you have to have persistence. And uh, that's something which I feel is missing nowadays with brands. You know, everyone's trying to get the quickest uh, VC funding and get out and uh, go big. And uh, and and even the brand language kind of evolves over time. I think we've at Napadori has been there for 15 years. You know what I started off with, and where we are now. It's it started off as a core leather goods company. Now it's more like a lifestyle brand. It has a complete holistic DNA towards it. And branched it, off into different realms in terms of interiors. Hundred percent. And 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 in terms of retail, you know, a retail how you, everyone can have a point of sale. You know, you can have it online. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty old school person in terms of, I like tactile feel and touch and experience. You can't have that online. And when COVID was going on at that point of time, everyone was going online. And I had so many people come to me and say, oh, brands are gonna be online and brick and mortar is gone. It would never go away, you know? People need to get out of their house and they have to go and experience things. There is emotion attached to it and uh, that you can't express online. And, uh, and how you, it's, it's not about selling a product, it's selling an experience, right? So when you come into the store, as Vivek also pointed out, the smell, the touch, the feel, how do you keep a person, because the attention span nowadays of people is really, really, you know, uh, small, right? It's 15 seconds, that's what you've got. As soon as they walk into your store and they look at the products and they're out or they're like thinking about something else. So how do you take that 15 seconds and make it three minutes? How do you keep the customer inside the store? And it's experiential retail, right? So like that's how we ended up doing Cafe Dory, which is our offshoot of the brand. You know, we went into f and I had no clue how to get into it. I knew I'd like coffee and eggs, but it was also to, you know, give the customer something new to do and retain them. And it's about, and I always tell my team this, you know, like it's not a point of sale, point of experience. I don't care if they buy something or don't buy something. Till the time they come, get absorbed in the environment that we've created, you know, have a smile on their face, have a nice coffee, and they go back, they'll talk to 10 other people. And at some point of time, that will translate into a sale, maybe online or offline, that doesn't matter. So that's really important. I think, I think that's something that a lot of brands are missing now. So when you see them online, and I see a lot of brands coming up, so. so that's, I mean, it's not part of my questions, but there are like many, many brands coming out on a daily basis, and it's amazing because it's lovely to see Indian brands go globally and people use more Indian brands than your, you know, uh, Italian and whatever, the foreign brands. But I want to know what it takes to make it relative 
make a brand sustain over years and in the years to come? Is there something specific? Is it using, uh, one of my questions was, is it using local product and local craftsmen? Is that one of the, or is it just purely utilitarian or is it design? Like, what do you think drives a brand to sustain for the long term? I think consistency is a key word out here because I feel the way I see it, you know, I always, again, tell my team this, that uh, we, we do classic silhouettes, right? Like, we, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm doing bags, you know, and there are a million bag brands out there. So how do we, and every time we are like having these debates in, in our house, like how do we differentiate ourselves? How do we be, become unique? Yeah. Or what's our selling point? Yeah. Our selling point is the fact that we're consistent. We deliver a good product and we rework old silhouettes. We get a sense of uh, emotional connect with our client. And that over a period of time kind of builds into goodwill and then it's habitual, right? So like people get into the habit of coming back to the same place. Yeah. So that's really important, according to me. Um, Vivek might have a different take on it. So. It is a very crowded marketplace. <coughs> Sorry. And um, I don't think, at least for the beauty business, uh, people come because it's locally crafted or not. I think, I think at the end of the day, the only reason you come is for quality and efficacy. So if the product works, you'll buy it. If it also looks nice, that's fantastic. But I think the most important thing is consistently maintaining quality, at least for us. So if I'm using a classical formulation and I decide that three years later, I'm going to be cheap and like reduce the amount of concentrate and I increase the amount of oil, um, about four years later, the customer will figure it out. You know, the results aren't as good and they stop using it. So I think you have to stay true to what you set out to be. Yeah. And every single product then that you do bring out in the future and that continues till now. So when we said we're an Ayurvedic brand, then we stuck to that. So every single cream and lotion that I use, um, because if you, there's obviously the pure oil on your face, but if you don't want to use that, there's also a day cream, which has got a milder version, but the foundations are all, you know, Ayurvedic products. They're not, invented by me or by somebody else. And I think that's really important that the fact that you're staying true to authentic Ayurveda, you know, yeah. uh, and to what your ethos is. So I think, and this idea of consistency, this idea of being true to who you are, uh, not diluting, because the minute you start, you see, the thing is, do you want to chase a quick buck? You know, um, it's very easy. I mean, I could start doing a whole bunch of things which I, you know, which I don't do, but then, after a few years, so I make the money now, but after three years, I'll be irrelevant because the customers coming to me for blue eyeshadow is, can also go to 10 other brands. They're not necessarily going to come to me, which is why you stick to what you're good at and you know, improve on that and develop new products on that. And there's enough in Ayurveda, at least for us, to be able to, I think for many lifetimes, to be able to do that. So I think the, I, I would stick with consistency, um, qual high quality and s staying true to whatever your ethos is. So whatever your guiding principles are, obviously, you know, companies change, companies expand, uh, things evolve. You have to evolve to the market, you know, because um, there's a whole new generation of very young people. So how am I selling Ayurveda to an 18 year old girl? Why is she interested in an anti-aging cream? She's not. So I have to figure out like what's good for acne or for 15, basically for a mother to buy um, Ayurvedic products for her. So I have to figure out, okay, let's look at acne, which is huge. Uh, and all you know, young young kid related issues, uh, then baby things for young mothers. Yeah. Uh, so you are figuring out the niches. There's enough market out there, but you're sticking with the foundation of Ayurveda. But obviously, you change depending on the market and the evolving of you know the kind of people are using it. And Ravi, Ravi furniture. It's it's an overcrowded market today. You know, I'm going to borrow from something. Uh, beauty is way more overcrowded. Know, so true. forget that's about forget about furniture. <laughs> For me, furniture, because it's so close to home. <laughs> so, you know, you will relate to it because when, I mean, I'm going to borrow from what they both said about consistency and vision and staying true to who you are. And obviously, I'm at a stage where 
I have two parallel brands. I have a design practice and people come to me for a certain language. And over the last few years, we've been making products and people consume them in a different capacity. And like Vivek said, there are several shortcuts out there, right? You can make a quick buck. You can add a thousand products if you want to. You can do projects and you can, I mean, from an interior design studio perspective, you can take shortcuts on your projects. You can say, fine, I'll turn this around faster. But is that you? Is that going to be you? Are you going to turn back and look at it and be happy with what you have created? And I think as interior designers and as a product designer, we are tastemakers. People are seeking you for a language, for a vision. The consumption pattern is different than what, I, what it would be for me to walk into an Apadori and buy a product maybe for myself, maybe if I want to give somebody. I use Kama products all the time. Uh, and I'm going to ask you a question about a product that's not there right now. <laughs> and, but you don't consume furniture the same way. You don't consume products the same way. You don't just walk in somewhere and you don't just buy a piece of furniture. It's or also you at a very different price point. Right. Even if the price, I mean, the price point. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm but saying. unfortunately, there are people today who will walk in and who will say, oh, can I have this right now? Oh, can I take this away? Oh, do you have five of these or do you have ten of these? And I think to stay, you, you have to ask yourself, where do I want to be? Do I want to be a brand that is going to be able to cater to this? And by all means, if that is what somebody's journey is, that is where they are. But for a, I think then you have to let go the design centric bit and you become slightly different and massy, right? And there's always a struggle between the two as to how, where do you find a common point and how do you make it work? But at the end of the day, you've got to be true to where you started out. You are going to evolve. You have to have the ability to let your brand evolve with that. Just because I was doing something eight years ago does not mean I want to continue doing that anymore. And I think that's the consistency of vision that helps a brand get to where you want it to be. Okay, amazing. I'm going to take notes. <laughs> um, we can't talk about marketing and not speak about social media. Is it a boon? Is it a bane? I know, Ravi, you run your own page. Uh, do you still? Sadly, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I can see your vulnerabilities. I can see design. I can see you in your page. You have your own tangent, which is Mr. Dory. Apart from the Nat Fedori page, you, none of that, right? My dear, I'm on my karma handle selling creams on a very regular basis. So, <laughs> you know, that's part of my day job. <laughs> so, while I don't have a personal page, I'm out there, I mean, Slightly aging, but you know, <laughs> good, good for a particular market. But is it essential? I mean, do is you do essential? to have uh, like a personal well, well, page okay, and to okay, have no, your I have, personality? I don't, I don't have there. a personal page. I mean, I, I listen after looking at a few thousand beauty ads a day. No, my headspace is fried. No, but I think uh, how can you ignore it? I mean, the whole. All, I think every single person in this room. I mean, all of us. Uh, how do we get information now? Is only on your phone, and I think on Instagram. I mean, how do I know if? if He's making clothes. I have to first go to his shop and find them or go to Instagram and see what his current range is, you know. So I'll obviously go to Instagram. So whether you personally want to do it, that's your call. I mean, you know, that's your business. But uh, if you're selling a product, that's the best way to find it. You know, it's, uh, it's the only way to find it. It's I remember the, when we were having our chat, you said you started off by shooting the product yourself and now evolved into... Well... When we started the brand, we had no money. So one thing which I realized was that if you have a good product, and if, well, for beauty I'm talking about, an, an efficacious product. So I used to go around with a, when I used to go for dinner parties, um, I used to put like a bag of two ML hair oils, testers, in my pocket. And then wherever I went, when I go for dinner, I was quite shameless, I have to say. I mean, from that point of view, I have no problem. I used to hand out two, two bottles, which is enough for three uses which is enough to get a sense of what your hair was going to feel like. So no money, but 
I genuinely had no money. I had to borrow money from my mother to open the shop. We four of us borrowed money from all our collective relations. But that before that, we used to hang around Pandington because I knew that basically had an 80% conversion rate on use, which I measured, physically measuring, yeah. So we used to better to hand out these samples because no money to take an ad out. There's no social media. We're talking about, you know, I'm a bit of a dinosaur, but uh, it's there. So sampling works really well. So, and I think Instagram works phenomenally. I mean, you, you can't pitch it. I mean, now whether he hires an agency to do it and does it personally, but I think the minute he shows his face, um, it's very pretty um, and it certainly helps. So, you know, I, I, and, and also I think, you no, know, genuinely, Ravi talking about a product and explaining what that product is about at the paper mash table yesterday, as against some agency talking about it are two completely different things, you know? You know, it's a very interesting topic for me because some, something I've been struggling with uh, because I've been on Instagram before Instagram was Instagram and what it's become. And unfortunately, everyone knows me as my Instagram handle. There are times when they'd be like, oh, you are Ravi and, you know, and it, it, it's surpassed. It's there. <laughs> it's become an identity. And... I have realized that whether I'm designing a home or whether I'm designing a product, I'm putting a part of me. And for me, we made that conscious decision that it's too late in the day to break it up and to have something else. I don't have the bandwidth because I'm too anal. I want to control everything. I can barely control what I'm doing right now. And at the end of the day, I choose to keep my Instagram as a mix of the two because everything that I design is inspired by what I surround myself with. I design spaces that tend to, that tend to have a calming uh, effect. Uh, that's what I'm told. Uh, and I think that's because I use that as a medium to calm the chaos in my head. And when I go on and sometimes I'm ranting or I'm having an opinion and we all know I have a lot of those on, on Instagram it's become a part of, of the brand. It's, you know, and it's, it's been an organic growth in that sense. I don't have the ability to make reels and dance and, and, and do all of that trying to, right? Because I've, I've had to find my belonging within this spectrum of thing for Ravi Vazirani Design Studio. But I do think it is an extremely important medium and maybe for brands who are starting out now within this spectrum where there is more information available, it, I think it's important. Like, I, I love what Gotham has done because Mr. Dory is Mr. Frickin' Dory, right? And it's amazing to follow that because I may not even go to an Appa Dory uh, brand page because I'm familiar with everything. But I want to see where Gotham is. I want to see what he's doing. And, and, it's, and because the brand is such a strong brand, it's inspiring to sort of follow those travels and see what he's doing in everything. And like Vivek was saying, Instagram sells. My entire product range only sells on Instagram. So, you, you know, you've got to do it. I mean, you know, it's part of where you are. You can choose how much you want to be a part of it. It can be frustrating, it can be overwhelming, and I may, I may just be getting way too old uh, to catch up with these things, but I think it's a very, very important part. For me, I, like for the longest time, I was like handling Napadori. Almost eight years, I was every single picture that went on it was shot by me from my phone. And uh, at some point of time, I had to like disengage with the brand and say that, okay, that's happening and uh, I can't do this anymore. Like I need to, because it's constantly around you, right? So, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm dyslexic. So for me, visually expressing myself is really important. So when I did start Mr. Dory, uh, it was, I didn't know what to post on it. I had zero clue. The first three, uh, four posts on it were like really random. And then I had to actually, because it was mostly Napadori. And then I had to say to myself that, okay, you know what? I need to have my own personal expression other than the brand as well. And uh, over the years, I've 
understood that a lot. I've understood myself a lot better because of it. Um, I like architecture. I like storefronts. I like coffee. I like things that I enjoy, and uh, I want to save those moments. So it's 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 my own personal memoir in a way, and uh, it's on social media, so it's open to the public. But that was not the point. It was my own personal diary. Yeah. Is dear Mr. Dory. Yeah. <laughs> so more or less for myself, you know. And uh, over the years, it's evolved, and uh, now I really enjoy it. You know, it's 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 my outlet uh, to just like express myself. Yeah, and 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 it's it's a nice place to go back to and see where you were a couple of years back and what did you do and what you know it's 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 your own uh, design analog memory box and and it's it's helped me engage with my audience a lot better now. I think there's a personal connect, and it's really important. Ravi needs that personal connect as well because people are obviously going to go buy his design. But at the, when you know the person who's made it, and the effort and time and energy that he's put into it, and there's a face to it, there's a completely you can't put value to that. So, so I, you think that's essential to have I, a face I, behind the brand? Hundred percent. Obviously, brands do work without faces behind it as well. But I think a personal connect, emotional attachment to something is a lot more important nowadays. Because I think, as as a generation, we are completely detached from everything. So, okay. Um, I want to ask for every twenty-year-old entrepreneur who wants to start something new, start a new brand. I mean, I'm also being a little selfish here, but what would you say? I mean, there are passionate people. There are very good brands, but they don't necessarily make it the way your brands have. So, what would you tell those budding entrepreneurs? Don't start things that are trend-based, and yeah. don't try to get things go viral. It doesn't last. You know, at the end of the day, we've all said one thing over and over again is consistency. You know, stay true to who you are. Do a quality product. Quality product will last you a lot longer. It will stay in people's mind a lot longer. It will be your extension of your own personality. And that's really important, you know. Like, and if you're trying to do something trend-based, then it's going to fade away like a trend as well. So, you know, and and that's really important. Quality consistency is is key to to evolve, and you can keep evolving over there. So, that's my take on it. I think it's a little hard for the current twenty-year-olds because. their model is instagram their model is instant gratification on social media right and i think it's important to know that what you see on social media is not necessarily the only picture there's a lot that goes behind the scenes whether you're hiring an agency whether you're doing it yourself kama is kama as he as he said he did what he had to where he you know he gave samples he did that he understood that market in it's there is it's difficult i understand but you've got to also understand that this is currently where the industry is where social media is important but it is a very it's one part of the bigger picture you have to have that depth you have to be ready for evolution you have to be ready to adopt uh, or rather adapt and you are going to fail and that failure is not a bad thing because you're going to know what's working for you and consistency is going to help you get there i think is uh, important to figure out why you're doing something you know like why am i doing this So am I doing this for fame? Do I want to become famous? Am I doing this for money? Um, is it a passion project? You know, like why am I doing this? And I think when you figure out what that reason is, the direction you take becomes that much clearer. So if you're doing it for fame, then you 
run a business in a particular kind of way. If you're doing it for money, you run it in a particular kind of way. And if you're just doing it because it's a passion project, it doesn't mean the passion project won't make money. So, but the thing is, try and have a clarity at the beginning because you can't be everything. And that's what I think happens to most of us. We get kind of lost along the way. You know, if you're making money, then just figure it out. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, just be clear as to what you'd like to do as a starting point. And then what actually ends up happening is there is no longer work. Because then you really enjoy what you're doing. You're happy to get up in the morning and you're happy to get to that place where you work because you are finding a direction. Yeah, it's always work, but it, no, but what I'm saying is it's a kind of joy because you know you're pursuing a particular kind of thing and this is the journey you've taken or the path that you've taken to get to that end goal. And whether it's furniture design, whether it's beauty products, whether it could be anything at all, you know, there's a, there's a room out there full of stuff uh, and around the world. So, but I think that's the starting point. And I think the other very important thing um, is patience. Um, there's no such thing as, I mean, it's in every book, but everywhere else, but you know, you need patience uh, and, perse you, and perseverance. But do you think there, is, there comes a point where you should just be real with yourself and say, listen, you know what, this is not working? Or do you just have that, to keep no, going? No, not at all. I, I, I mean, if you're not pragmatic, that's really foolish of you. Because you figure out this is not working or this direction is not working, then better to cut your losses. You cut your losses there and then and do something else. Or, it, or, or do early. another thing. Oh, oh. I mean, uh, why would you otherwise be stuck with this? There's no point. I've Has that changed, happened? I've at changed. Some point? I've changed careers about four times. So you know, yeah. So easy one. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not going to keep designing a bag that's not selling, right? So like at the end of the day, you cut your losses as well. You know, every single product that you design is not going to be a bestseller. But are you consistent? Are you still going to give a quality product? Yes. And uh, and pick your losses, right? You know, at the end of the day, you have to as much as you want to be a designer, create an amazing brand, whatever said and done, you have to be commercially viable as well, right? If you're not commercially viable, it's going to last a couple of months, so you're going to dry out and walk away, you know? And, and that's, there's a fine line between the two. And, and when we, do you realize that? How far it is? When you can't pay the salaries on time. <laughs> when you're not making money, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there are no shortcuts, right? Like I could have, uh, in the early days, you know, we could have had, I could have made easy money. You know, I could have been on a lot of platforms, could have been on Amazon, could have been on other, other platforms, sold my products, but I picked not to, you know, for a long time. And perseverance, patience is needed because if you're trying to create a value chain in your product and your brand, then you need to. The new patience has to be there. Yeah. You know, scarcity, scarcity is luxury as well. Yeah. You know, and let people want it. So these are these are things that you learn on over time yeah. as well. This is very insightful for me because I learned so much from all of you. Please give a big round of applause. This was like a short lesson in marketing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.